Christ, it renewed my life. Let's thank you. It is not by our power, it is not by our mind. Your word and not be here as a Lord and single fellowship and for the into that mind are learning how to even build their home today through your word in Jesus. Let's ask so that his presence shall come mind because we know you've done it. For in Jesus name of the Lord. Sister. We worship you for you are Every one of them. Chapter 29 and verse 11. There are singles in the house. Thank you for the Lord. We give you thanks. We give you glory. Father, we are praise. Appreciate your name. We say thank you. And open their eyes. Voices from the bondage of wrong choice. That is in the bondage of the wrong choice. Written in the book of Psalms, chapter 32. I will guide you with my eye in error. In the name of Jesus of the wicked. In the name of Jesus the mighty shall be delivered. In the name of any of our singles in the bondage of wrong church. In the name of Jesus. We cancel such spell. The Bible makes us understand that Christ has been made that is holding and is resting on the line in terms of non-contentment. In the blood of Jesus, we wipe it out singles in Jesus' house. Our singles in Jesus' house. And with it, and with it, the grace the grace to obey you are willing to obey you are willing instruct the instruct the all our singles all this morning and they receive the grace to obey the grace was in the house stop the lake maran upcoming weddings coming up next month and all the future will be nullified in the name of jesus of the enemy in the name of jesus the second glory of god begins to hold of god begins to hover around the god jesus but in jesus mighty name we Praise the living Jesus. And we testify as of my family. It's going to call home. It's always good news. The scholarship I got um, was one. Okay, let's appreciate God over my family, uh, my faith, or just faith is on all sides. God has been faithful. Let's to just worship God. Bless His name. Do this in our midst. Fire in our mouth with good things in this house. So the Lord Almighty be lifted up. Lord Almighty, we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. It's offering time. Please let's be on our feet. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. The word of the Lord says in the book of Malachi chapter 3 verses from verse 8, will a man rob God, yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have ye robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. I read from verses 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's thank the Lord for the offerings that we have given unto him. Let's thank God because he has filled our pockets with money. He has filled our pockets with tangible gifts that we are able to give unto him. Let's bless the Lord Almighty. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that all our offerings be acceptable, all our tithes, all our seeds be acceptable unto the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Happy, make a joyful noise. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In this session, we'll be praying for marriages. Brother, let's just uh, close our eyes and begin to worship God. Let's just thank our God. He's a faithful God. There is none like unto him. Let's begin to thank God for all marriages in Jesus' house. 
thank you for all marriages that are even connected to you. God has been faithful. God has been great. God has been awesome. He's been amazing. He's been doing great and wondrous things in our marriages. Let's just worship him. Let's just exalt his name. There is none like unto you. There is none to be compared to you. Father in heaven, you are the keeper of our marriages. You are the one who has kept us. You are the one who has brought us thus far. Father, we are grateful. We have come to return all the praise and glory to you. My Lord, we have come to say thank you. Receive all the praise. Receive all the glory. Blessed Redeemer, I am that I am. The rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. Be thou exalted forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just thank God. Let's say, Father, we thank you for peace. Father, we thank you for love. We thank you for divine provisions. We thank you for spiritual and material increase. We thank you for your mercies over our marriages. Lord, we are grateful. Let's just begin to thank God. Let's thank God for the peace he has bestowed on all our marriages, on the marriages even associated with ours, on the marriages in, our, in this house. Father, we are grateful. We thank you for peace. We thank you for your hand, for divine provisions, for spiritual and material increase. God has not allowed us to beg for bread. He has not brought disgrace to the marriages in this house. Let's just say, Father, we are thankful. We have come to return all the glory to you. Thank you for your mercies. The Bible makes us to understand that if not for the mercies of God upon our life, we would have been consumed. So also in our marriages, if not for God's mercies, a lot of things might have happened. Father, we are grateful. Receive all, uh, receive all the glory forever in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say, Father, please make all marriages in Jesus' house a godly marriage and perfect all that concerns all the families in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just begin to pray and say, Father, please make all marriages in Jesus' house a glorious marriage. Let's ask God to make all marriages in Jesus' house a godly marriage. In the name of Jesus, Father, we decree, we speak into every marriage in Jesus' house. We speak into every marriage that is associated to Jesus' house. Father, make them a godly marriage. Perfect all that concerns all the families, all the families represented here in this house, all the families that are connected to each and every one of us. Father, perfect them in the name of Jesus. Your word in Psalm 138 verse 8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the work of thy own hands. Father in heaven, you are the one who has established the marriages in this house. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you will not forsake the works of thy own hands. Perfect that which concerneth me. Perfect that which concerneth my marriage. Perfect that that concerns all marriages in Jesus' house. All the marriages associated to Jesus' house. Father, perfect them. Let all glory be ascribed to you forever in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, let's pray and say, Father, please draft couples from the community into Jesus' house and let them be saved and established in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Father in heaven, as we pray, by your mighty hand, we ask that you call forth men and women, call forth couples from around this community, from the four ends and the four corners of this environment, Father, please call them forth, draft them, bring them, save their souls, establish them in the faith, in the name of Jesus. Do wondrous things in them, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, all couples around this uh, uh, this community around Sargent Avenue. Father, we ask that you draft them in the name of Jesus. Let their souls be, sa be saved. Let them be established in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let the light of what you're doing in marriages in Jesus' house, let it even spread abroad to everyone around this environment, to all marriages and couples around this environment. In the name of Jesus, let the light of the great things that you're doing doing, let it draw forth men to this house and cause them to be saved and established to the praise and glory of your name, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name. Let's say, Father, please give understanding to all the marriages in Jesus' house in relating to their in-laws in Jesus' name. Let's turn that into prayers. Let's say, Father, give wisdom, give understanding to all the couples in this house on how to relate to their in-laws in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please give understanding to all the marriages, to all the couples in Jesus' house on how to relate best with their in-laws in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be no conflict. There will be no conflict in the name of Jesus. Brethren, if there is a conflict between in-laws, it will definitely affect the marriage. Let's begin to decree that the wisdom that our men need, the wisdom that our women need to relate with their in-laws, let's ask that God will grant unto each one in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please grant understanding. Please grant wisdom to our couples. Please grant wisdom to every marriage that they would know how to relate with their in-laws and that at the end of the day that the peace of God would reign in their families in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we decree over our sisters, we decree over the, over the women, over the men. Father, we ask that you continue to unite them, that the wisdom they need to put all that we learn in this house into practice, you would grant into each one in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because we know you have heard us. We thank you because we know that you are in our midst this morning. Father, we return all the praise and glory to you. Blessed Redeemer, be thou exalted forever. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness upon our life. We thank you for the great things you are doing in our lives. Thank you for the great things you are doing in, in every marriage that is in, associated to this house, every marriage in Jesus' house. Father, we thank you for the great things you are doing for them. Father, the grace and wisdom that they need, that our women need to continue to be good wives, to continue to be godly wives and mothers, to be godly husbands and godly fathers. Please, we ask that you would grant unto each one in the mighty name of Jesus the grace to even put into practice all that we learn even in this uh, in this fellowship, Father, please grant in, unto every marriage, every couple in the name of Jesus, even as we continue with today's service, we ask that you continue with us and that everything would go even according to, to your plan in the name of Jesus. Father, we return all the glory to you today. Be thou exalted, mighty Redeemer. Thank you because we know that indeed you have heard us. Blessed be your name forever, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. In this segment of prayer, we'll be praying for our communities. We'll be praying against divorce, separation, and marital challenges in the community. Just before we do that, we're just going to sing this worship song to just adore the name of the Lord. We long for your face, the secret place. You are our way. Be magnified. We long, we long for your face. The secret place, the secret place. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. Be magnified, be magnified. We long for your face. The secret place. You are your way. Be magnified. So we long for your face. The secret place. You are your way. Be magnified. Hallelujah. The Bible is speaking in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. One of the challenges that we are having in the community is because people are walking blindly. So we are going to pray. We start by saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, take away every blindfold, covering all marriages in this community. In the name of Jesus, let the light of the gospel begin to shine. 
end to their marriages. Let's go ahead and pray. When the light of the gospel begins to shine into the marriages of the communities, then we will find peace and serenity within this community. In the name of Jesus, every blindfold covering every husband, every wife, every blindfold covering all the marriages in this community, covering all the marriages in this society. In the name of Jesus, we ask for the light of the glorious gospel to begin to penetrate through. We ask for the gospel of, the, of Jesus to begin to penetrate, to begin to penetrate, to begin to have its way. In the name of Jesus, let the gospel of Christ begin to have its way into all the marriages in this community. In the name of Jesus, let the glory of God be revealed in this community. Let the glory of God be revealed in all marriages. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my Father, my Father, as we begin to pray, let the gospel of Christ begin to shine in the hearts of all the husbands and the wives in this society, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. The Bible is speaking in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, I exhort thee therefore, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For all men, we are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we break the siege of marital challenges, of marital problems in this community. In the name of Jesus, please go ahead and break the siege. The siege is over. The siege is over. In the name of Jesus, we break the siege of marital problems, of marital challenges in this community. In the name of Jesus, no more divorce in our communities. No more divorce. No more separation. In the name of Jesus, what God has joined together will not be put asunder by the laws of men. What God has joined together will not be put asunder by the challenges and by the situations of men. In the name of Jesus, we break break every siege of marital spell. We break every siege of marital problems. We break every siege of marital challenges in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, this community is free from divorce. This society is free from separation in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We will say, Father, we put an end to demonic agenda of domestic violence in our community. In the name of Jesus, please go ahead and pray. Every demon that sponsors domestic violence, every demon that sponsors domestic violence that is still in oppression in this vicinity, that is still in oppression in Sargent, that is still in oppression in Winnipeg, that is still in oppression in Manitoba, and in the entire nation of Canada, we frustrate their counsel, we expel their activities. In the name of Jesus, we command their influence to be suspended. We command their demonic influence to be suspended. In the mighty name of Jesus, every demon that sponsors domestic violence, we put an end to your assignment right now. We put an end to your assignment right now. In the name of Jesus, this community is free from domestic issues. This community is free from domestic violence. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no more homicide. There will be no more issues going around with husbands and wives. In the name of Jesus, no fightings or quarrelings of whatever kind. Every demon that is sponsoring this activity we frustrate you right now. In the name of Jesus, we put an end to your assignment. We put an end to your assignment. We put an end to your agenda in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And let's begin to thank God for answered prayers. Let's say, Father, thank you. Thank you for delivering our communities. Thank you for delivering our communities. Thank you for delivering our communities. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for delivering our communities. Lord, we give you praise, we give you thanks, and we give you honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Prayers in Jesus' name. Our prayers are answered in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We are here going to pray. We are going to lift up our voices and say, Father, you are the author of marriage. This is my marriage and all marriages in Jesus' house. And those that are yet to be married, settle them maritally. Go ahead and make that your prayer. Father, you are the author of marriage in the name of Jesus. Visit my marriage in the name of Jesus. 
visit my marriage in the name of Jesus. Father, you are the author of marriage. You are the author of marriage. Visit the marriages of all your children in Jesus' house. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, you are the author of marriage. As many that are yet to be maritally settled, Father, I pray, settle all our singles in the name of Jesus. Lord, visit our marriages. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You are going to lift up your voices and say, Father. You are going to say, Father, put an end to whatever causes problems and challenges and sorrows in marriages in the body of Christ. Go ahead and make that your prayer. In the name of Jesus, whatever causes problems, challenges, sorrow in marriages in the body of Christ, Father, today put an end to them. Put an end to them in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Magnify yourself in this place. Sanctify yourself in this place. Glorify yourself in this land. No one else we take your place. No one else we take your place. Magnify, magnify. Yourself in this place, in your life, in your home, sanctify yourself in this place. Tell him to glorify himself, glorify yourself in this place. No one we take your place. No one else we take your place. I will be magnified for as long there is room in our homes. I will be glorified for as long there is room. I will. I will be glorified for as long there is room for me. We are thirsty for you. We are hungry for more. I will be glorified for as long there is room. In our homes, God will be glorified. I will be sanctified. For as long there is room, oh, I will be glorified. For as long there is room for me, we are thirsty for you. We are hungry for more. You are going to say, Father, there is space for you in my life. There is space for you in my marriage. Go ahead and make that your prayer this morning. If you allow God to be magnified, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. Lift up your voice this morning and say, Father, there is room for you in my life. There is room for you in my marriage. There is room for you in my home. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, come and be magnified. Jesus, come and sanctify yourself. Jesus, come and glorify yourself. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Ancient of days, I bless your name this morning. Thank you for all the married and singles fellowship program we have had in this year from January to date. It is your doing that is marvelous in our sight. Thank you for the peace and joy that we are enjoying in our various homes. Thank you for all our singles, our bones, our locating bones. Thank you for opening of the eyes. Thank you for understanding. 
Thank you for visiting us every month that we gather. Today, Father, we have gathered again. Please, Lord Jesus, let the heavens be open in the name of Jesus. Both for we that are married and those that are single, in the name of Jesus, the necessary equipment, the necessary preparation, the necessary understanding, the necessary wisdom required, even when it, as it relates to, to, to in-laws. Father, today pour upon us in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone whose homes, is there anyone whose marital settlement is in, the, is in shambles because of issue of in-law? Today, Father, you will arise and intervene. Lord, we pray for marriages in this community. You will heal every home. I pray for marriages in your church globally in the name of Jesus. Father, grant victory, total victory to all the couples in the name of Jesus. We come against divorce. We come against any form of sorrow. We come against loss in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are friends. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Let somebody shout a big hallelujah. Please, you may take your seat. You may take your seat. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I uh, will ask because of the camera, the sisters from this side, just stay on this side. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. God bless you. Yes. All right. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Then you can, you can bring down. Praise the Lord. We have been... Uh, no, I'm okay now. Thank you. Uh, the, the Lord has been taking us through series of topics, a uh, series of issues, particularly as it relates to marriages and also brethren that are preparing to be married. And we have seen what God can do even through this program. I want you to jam your hands together for Jesus for what God has been doing <laughs> using this program for months. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, one of the reasons we sit down when we are doing this is because we want to make it a natural fellowship indeed. Uh, we didn't want to make it uh, like pastor preaching on the pulpit. Um, and then you may not be able to ask questions when pastor is preaching on the pulpit. But this one, we want to make it a uh, fellowship indeed. Uh, today, God has given us an important topic. Please turn your Bible with me to the book of Ruth. To the book of Ruth. Just after the book of Judges. The book of Ruth. Uh, we are going to do a little bit of Bible study together. And then thereafter, um, we'll look at one or two things and then we'll give room for questions. And also, thank God, we have others that are married here. So if perhaps uh, they have one or two experiences they want to share. Uh, now, the book of Ruth, chapter 3. The team before us today, please let's project the team on the screen, if you have it. The team before us is godly marriage and in-laws. Godly marriage and in-laws. Now, you see, the mainstream media has painted so many wrong images about in-laws. The mainstream media has not helped the mat has not helped uh, matters at all. And so, as a result of this, it has created some sort of images in the heart of our single brother, single sisters. Even people that are married. Now, you even see people that are not even married. They're already having these, uh, you know, feelings or about uh, their in-laws. Uh, but again, if you look through the Bible closely, uh, when God authored marriage, he knew we are going to have in-laws. And so in-laws are supposed to be blessing. Tell your neighbor, in-laws are supposed to be blessing. In-laws are supposed to be blessings. Yes, in-laws are supposed to be a blessing to our marriage. So I want you to feel at home, and those of you joining us online, 
make sure you're focused on those of us that are here. Uh, again, we want to make it as much fellowship as possible. Um, so now, so what, what is bringing about this topic as the Holy Spirit is leading us is the mainstream media has really, uh, you know, bastardized the idea of, you know, marriage and in-law. Uh, you know, some you watch some movie, how they said, uh, you know, the mother-in-law is terrible, the father-in-law is this, and all of that. Um, so, but I want us to understand that when God created marriage, uh, in-laws were not ordained to be problem. They were meant to be a blessing to us, particularly to our younger generation, to our brethren who are yet to be married, our singles in the house who are preparing to be married. Uh, there's one thing we are confident of is that your marriages will be glorious in Jesus' name. In fact, much more glorious than our own in Jesus' name. Uh, because the truth is that some of the things that we are getting to know now, they are not things that we, we were taught, uh, you know, uh, but we are privileged. You are most privileged. Uh, so that's why we are sure that your marriages will be glorious. Now, uh, Ruth chapter 3. Uh, we're reading from verse 1 to 18, so we'll share it. Again, like I said, we want to make it as, as much uh, 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 fellowship as possible. Now, I will read from verses 1 uh, up to 4. Uh, Mommy will take it from 5 and take it up to 8. And then let's have somebody from this row. Uh, you take it from 9 up to 12. And then let's have somebody from the middle row take it from 13 up to 15. And then somebody from the Oyelayes uh, side will take it from verse 16 to 18. 16 to 18. Now I read. We are looking at the subject, godly marriage and in-laws. Godly marriage and in-laws. Then Naomi, our mother-in-law, look at that one, Naomi, our mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee? Look at it. The mother-in-law is seeking rest for the daughter-in-law. That is not the what the media is painting for us. What the media is painting for us is that the daughter-in-law is a witch. That is what the media is painting. Right? Now, uh, that, uh, that it may be well with thee. Look at that. Look at the heart of Naomi towards her own daughter-in-law. Now, he went on and said, Now is not Boaz of our kindred with whose maiden thou was? Behold, he, 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 he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Watch thyself, therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy, thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, but make not thyself known unto the man, until he shall have done eating and drinking. Look at that word. These were all ideas from Naomi. These are Naomi here speaking. Verse 4. And it came to pass, and, and it shall be when he lieth down, and that, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet, and lay thee there down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. Verse 5 to 8. And she said unto her, All that thou said unto me I will do. And she went down unto the floor and did according to all that her mother in law did her. Verse 7. And when Boaz had eaten and drink and drink, drunk, and he ha his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and lie her down. Verse 8. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lie at his feet. Amen. Uh, she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. 
spread therefore thy skirts over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. Please sit down, sit down. Thank you. Go ahead. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast filled with more kindness in the latter, in the latter end than at the beginning. Inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich, verse eleven, and now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. Now pay attention to that. Verse it say, thank you, hold on. Uh, it says, it says, For all the city, all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. You have a virtuous mother-in-law, and then you have a virtuous daughter-in-law. So what that reveals to us is that if you want a good mother-in-law, you yourself be a good daughter-in-law. Be a virtuous daughter-in-law. Now go ahead, verse 12. Verse 12. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. How be it there's a kinsman nearer than I? Hmm. The man Boaz fears the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 13, from the middle row, anybody can read, just read, just read. 13, so this night and in the morning it shall be that if he will perform the duty of a poor widow king for you, good, let him do it. But if he does not, if he does not want to perform the duty for you, then I will perform the duty for you as the Lord lives. Lie down and do not move. 14, so she lay at his feet and do not move. And arose before one could recognize the lady. Then he said, Do not let me believe that the woman seems to be suffering sorely. Fifteen. Also he said, Bring the shawl that is on you and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six ephahs of barley and laid it on her. Then she went into the city. Thank you. Verse 16. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Look at uh, look at what Naomi said. Naomi said the man will not rest until he has finished the thing this day. And Boaz indeed did not rest until he was able to finish the matter. Now, from these studies, there are many things that we could see here. Um, now I'm going to ask us. What are some of the things that you see in this in this study? What are some of the highlights? Maybe we take four, uh, four, uh, one at least. Okay, let's let's balance it. Two from marriage, and then two from single. What are the the the, the, the main things we are seeing here? Yes, it's open. Like I said, we want to do fellowship. Yes. Hallelujah. Sees that she's, uh, Naomi sees Ruth as her daughter, mm. not just like her daughter-in-law, as in she sees her as part of herself, mm. which is the way every one of us should see our in-law. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very, very important point for those of us joining us online. Our sister is saying that one of the main issues to a point here is that Naomi sees Ruth as her own daughter, not as a daughter-in-law. Because the way you see somebody will determine how you relate with them. If Naomi had seen Ruth as just a daughter-in-law, she would have treated her differently. The way we see ourselves, husband and wife, and singles as to preparing to be married, the way you see, you perceive your spouse, whatever perception you may have, or whatever perception you may have regarding your spouse, family, it's going to go a long way to form your habits, your attitude. It's going to determine how you relate with them. If the, if the perception you have is, oh, they are bad family. Even though you've not related with them, what happened? That notion will form the way you relate with them. 
if you if you if you have the inclination that oh well this is a godly family you carry that same thinking to that family you you relate to them from that level but if you have been told that oh the fact that man a very wicked man that woman very wicked that is also the mindset so our attitude what the information you have about your in-law your spouse your partner you know your your future partner to be and so on it determines how you relate to the very important point okay let's have a sing okay we'll come back to sister doris uh let's have a single this time around somebody that's not married i'm saying three married uh, uh you know i'm saying okay let's have the singles what are you saying that will come back to somebody that's married now yes our single sisters and brothers The lady or the daughter who was in Naomi and her mother-in-law, she was very respectful, saying that whatever um, the mother-in-law was telling her to do, she had this aura of respect, aura of obedience, aura of somebody that loves the Lord, that has that home training, and that's what we can see from this passage. Ooh. She had aura of respect, uh, for uh, Naomi. So that means you can't really actually have a good relationship with your father-in-law or mother-in-law if you don't respect them, if you dishonor them. So you have to have that respect for them. You have to honor them. That's very, very important. Exodus 22 tells us, honor thy father and thy mother so they may be well with you. Now, so the place of honor, Ruth also sees, it's like Ruth saying, you know, I could imagine what Ruth's mo biological mom is thinking. Maybe the Bible didn't tell us about her biological mother. But I could imagine the biological mother would be saying, hey, see, this girl has forgotten me. She even abandoned me completely. Is it that I've done her something wrong? No. So it paints the kind of picture that we are supposed to have. As a sister, when you are married to your husband's family, you are married to them. That is your new home. That is your new family. Don't feel like an alien. Feel like some, this is my new home. This is my new family. That's the way God created it. And in the name of Jesus, we will enjoy our marriages in Jesus' name. Yes, Sister Doris, very important point. And uh, amen. Thank you. Sorry before. Uh, brethren that is looking at uh, helping us with the media, if there, are, if there are questions, please just you help coordinate with him, please, so that we can. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Um, my point was quite similar to what Brother Seth said. So in verse 5, it says, And she said unto her, All that thou said unto me, I will do. So she was very obedient and very humble. She took all the instructions that Naomi gave. And she just uh, took it on and went and did what she told her to do. Mm, mm, very, very important. So that to follow up, just like she said, uh, he said, all that thou seest unto me, I will do. So the question is, in, in the body of Christ today, how many sisters-in-law can say that? Maybe we shouldn't get answer to that question for now, but let's ponder on that. How many sisters-in-law can say, Mama, that which you have said to me, I will do. Now, let's take one more. Yes, sister. Okay, I saw Brother Titus Ann before. That was also in line with your point. Okay. All right. Let's hear from Sister Uche. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Please I sit down. Please sit down, like she said. Okay. Yes. Um, why reading this by the grace of God and by the help of the Holy Spirit? That we, a lot of things to learn, but I could sense trust. I could just sense this trust. It's not just trust on one side, but it's a mutual trust. Like the reason why some mother-in-law could not even let their son-in-law rest in bed, they don't even trust the daughter-in-law if they are even doing the, what they're supposed to be doing. But Naomi, um, Naomi told Ruth, like, do this, do that, do that. She, she was not, she was not reluctant. She just trusted her. And even on the other end, when Naomi told her that this matter is set, it should be settled today, you can still sense that same trust. It's just a mutual trust. Trust the mother-in-law, and you also you will not lose your trust in the daughter-in-law. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very, very important point. So we'll come back to that again. There are questions. Please do let us know. Now, 
like we have all spoken. Now, the truth is this, if you really want to understand uh, how, you know, how far Ruth and Naomi uh, was able to come, you have to read chapter 1 and chapter 2. So, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that briefly. Now, from this story, Naomi and uh, Ruth did not just come overnight to become uh, two best friends. So, of course, many of us are familiar with the story. The, s the story was that the uh, Elimelech, who happens to be the husband of Naomi, because there was famine, there was things were tough, just like he went for a, a, you know, a greener pasture. So he went to the m land of Moab. Now, one of the shocking things about this story, or particularly Ruth, is that the Moabites were descendants of Esau, and they were avowed enemy of God. God even said that the Israelites should have nothing to do with the Moabites. So the Moabites were enemies of God. They are not even in the first place supposed to be married or joined together. So in the first place, Elimelech, who happens to be the husband of Naomi, he went to a wrong place to seek refuge. And so, long story short, they were there. We were not told why Elimelech died or what led to his death. All our men, long life, your portion in the name of Jesus. Uh, and then the, the, the another sad thing was that they had two sons. And so those two sons too also died. But before they died, they were already married. They had wives. One of the names of the wife is Ruth and the other one is Hopper. Now, when they die, it happens that, of course, it is like saying, you know, Naomi, Naomi at that time, uh, perhaps she was bearing uh, the greatest, you know, uh, you know, heaviness on earth. Because it is like saying all the male, all the man, all the man in our life, all the male in our life were gone. And so she was indeed in deep sorrow. And you could feel it. You could feel it from her response. Her response was that I said, don't call me Ma Na Naomi. Call me Mara. Mara means bitterness when she returned. And so she was in a state of bitterness. Why? She lost the men the people that are important in her life. She lost her husband. Not only that, she lost her two sons. And so she was hopeless. Now, but then, one of the things we are seeing here is this. Opa decided to go back, but Ruth decided to stay. There is something behind this story, which is the finger of God. Even before room were formed in her mother's room, God already knew that room Ruth will become the great great grandmother of Jesus Christ. So these were all, even though we didn't really see much of God, but the finger of God behind all this story, everything. God shows us that even among the Gentiles, He can raise righteousness. Even among the unbelievers, God can decide to bring forth even people that that's why Jesus Christ says something. He said that the children of, the, of this world, they are wiser than the children of the light. He said on the last day, he said, go, go and call the, all the lame people on the street, the, the, the street beggar, the prostitute, call them. The people that I prepared the kingdom for, they are not even ready. We will be ready in the name of Jesus. I say, you will be ready in the name of Jesus. So that's the, that, so that's the story. Now, when the root had that, of course, there was nothing else for us to live. On in the land of Moabai. Of course, she could become a disgrace to people even in the community. When she's passing in the community, people will say, well, that is, uh, don't you know, they say, don't you know that Naomi? You know what they will call her? They say she's a witch. Yes? I mean, if a, a woman lost her husband, lost her two, two sons. From back home, what are they? Of course, the, the, same, the new name for her is no longer Naomi, it's witch. And so when she's passing in the community, it's easier to say, Ah, you see that which she going. She killed her husband. She killed her children. And so she decided to go back because things were turning well for the land of Israel. And then Ruth and Alpha, who were also with her, uh, Ruth decided to stay. She said, "Where your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. Now, let's move forward now to chapter 3, where we, which is our main focus. Godly marriage and in love. Both for us that are married and the singles that are here or joining us online. It is important we know that 
No sister falls from heaven. Is every sister, you know, stems from a family. No sister falls from heaven. In the same vein, also, no brother falls from heaven. We all came from families. They have not heard where they say somebody just jumped down from heaven and then begin to have family. No. Um, now, although we are not to dwell in our past, especially if we hail from ungodly lineage, but important, it is also important to know a little bit about your in-law, particularly for those of us that are preparing to be married. It's good you have some knowledge about what your in-law, who are they, what are they, you know, what is, their, what is about this family? You need to know. Because uh, the truth is that um, any, any brother who is going to, if you're going to be married, you're saying, oh, I have seen a beautiful sister, uh, I've seen a gift of God I want to marry. You know, like one of our father in the faith will say, say, if you are marrying her, remember you are marrying the mother. What does that mean? It's a word of proverb. It tells us that you are simply saying that the nature of our mom, you're go likely going to see that. So the question is, what is the nature of the mom? That's the question we must ask ourselves. Now, but brethren, wisdom, and we need, we, we need the spirit of God, and or that is the spirit of wisdom, in order for us to have a godly marriage, particularly in relating with in-laws. There are many homes today that are in disarray, even Christian homes, because of in-laws. In-laws are not meant to divide marriages. In-laws are designed to be a blessing. And so we are going to look at a few things. Now, for our singles in the house, uh, it's important you know who is the God, which God are they serving in your in-laws' families? Before you make a decision, oh, the sister is beautiful, oh, the brother is handsome, all of those qualities are good. But have you asked yourself, which God, who is the God in charge of their family? Is this some God or Jesus Christ? You need to know. These are things you need to know. Don't be carried away by all the flashy things you are saying. If you don't know, because the gods that control that family eventually is the one that will come and rule in your home, whether you like it or not. And so it's important you know where you are going to be married to, including the sisters. You need to know who is the God, what is this family all about? Are they Christians? What kind of Christians? Are they born again? What church do they attend? Brothers, sisters, you need to know these basic things before you make your marital decision. Now, uh, for us that are, I mean, they're still talking about their single brothers. What is the family value? Every family has values. Every family has value. Every family. Of course, I can tell you categorically, anybody that will come and say the God is saying, when my daughter has finished her PhD, when the, anybody that's saying God is saying, of course, the person has to be a born-again Christian. Criteria number one, check off. If it's not there, if I should not even smell the, the door. You know, uh, one of our brothers in the, in the faith, uh, one day when he saw our daughter, he said, uh, Brother David, ah, hmm. you need to go and buy a dog. I see for what, sir? He says, he said to chase out the boys, uh, you know, those boys. Well, I said, no, this one. My daughter doesn't require that. She will grow up in the will of the law. She will learn the will of the law. We don't need to have dog in our company. It is not dog that chases the brother, see we? <laughs> That's what he was trying to say. Now, but he was just trying to say, I said, I said the word of the Lord. I said, God will train her all. And they will not worry about uh, brother or here. That will not be our worry. And for parents, that will not be a worry in Jesus' name. So where am I going is this. Of course, if anybody is going to say, ah, my, our son comes tomorrow when, you know, when they are grown, fully grown up and, they, you know, in their, you know, career, ministry and so on. And they say, ah, daddy, mommy, this is the sister we are, of course, you know, criteria number one is, is this person born again? Uh, so we have to know that. And of course, we are church people and we are happy doing it. That is our value. So if anybody coming into our family and is not ready to be a church person, what happened? There's going to be, is a challenge. 
So for our singles, you need to know what is the value of the family you want to be, and to be married to. You need to know what are the things that are important to them. If you don't know these things, and you just jump in with saying love, love, love. Love is good, but I tell you, you need to know what is the family value. We can see that in the life of Ruth. One of the things that we saw in the life of, remember, Ruth happens to be an idol worshiper. She was an idol worshiper. But then, because of her union with the son of, uh, of Naomi and Elimelech, she converted to Christianity. And now, she has found faith in Christ. Now, the, the lifestyle of Naomi influenced her so much to the point that she said, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. So what does that tell us? For we that are parents, when our children are all you know, ready to be married, we should, not be a, we should not be a thorn in the flesh. If, you, if your daughter-in-law comes and see that you're a godly mother, you're a godly father, she won't have any problem, you know, gone, you know, easily she will blend. And so we saw that in the life of Ruth. Ruth was an idol worshiper, but coming into the Elimelech family, she accepted God. She came to know about the Almighty God. She came to know about the God of Israel. And we could see that in her life. So very important. Number one, what is the role of, so those questions were for, again, our single brethren, and uh, not for we that are already married, we're already married, and we're already enjoying our marriage, but there are things that the Lord is. Number one is, what is the roles of uh, the in-laws? So let's look at the roles of our in-laws, because very soon, the daddies and mommies will talk about maybe in another 20, 15 years or so, you know, you know, you too, you become, uh, <laughs> you become in-laws. <laughs> I see, uh, you know, sister, you is laughing. Yes, we we'll become in-laws. You know, you'll be hearing the in-law, let me go and visit my in-law. And we'll be alive and well in the name of Jesus. And our children will do well in the name of Jesus. Their marriage will flourish in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, that time is coming. Let's look forward to it. Number one, godly counsel. If you look at from verse 2 of this scripture where we read, is that, and now is not Boaz our kindred, with whose maiden thou wast, behold, he will wet barley tonight in the threshing floor. And if you read verse 3, wash thyself. That means what is what was Naomi telling? Uh, Ruth, look elegant. Wash thyself. Anoint, that means look radiant. Look be, uh, beautiful. And put on thy raiment upon thee and get thee down to the floor. Look at the wisdom. So what is the role of, of, of in-laws in our marriage? They are there to offer godly counsel. Our in-laws, whether we are married now or you are single, is that our in-laws are supposed to offer us godly counsel. Counsel that will bring about the mind of God. That will further reveal the counsel of God for our lives. Any counsel that is against the word of God that's against the plans and purpose of God. For instance, it's a good counsel if your father-in-law or mother-in-law tells you, my son, please help me take good care of my daughter. Make sure you pray for her. Make sure you help me to look good care. Again, those are basic counsel. Now, but if we go deeper, a good counsel is this. My daughter, you better listen to your husband. Listen. Daddy, why will I listen to him? Why will I listen to all this? Listen to him. 
listen to your husband and submit to your husband. That is a good counsel. So in-laws are there to offer good counsel. They are not there to destabilize our homes. And that's why it's important we must know who the God of uh, the family, your in-laws are. Who is the God? Father and mother in-laws are there to offer godly counsel. They are there to share their wealth, their wealth of life experiences. They have gone through a lot. They, they, they are there to share with us. What was their experiences like raising up their own children? They are supposed to sit us down and tell us, this was our experiences. For our singles, these are the key things that you need to understand, even as we prepare to be married. What was their experiences about family finance? So we can draw from their wealth of experience. Now, most especially if they are born again. But then, how can somebody offer godly counsel if he or she is not a child of God? And so, that brings us again to the case of Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was a woman that fears the Lord. She was a child, a woman of God. Naomi, so Ruth saw that godliness in the life of Naomi, and that was why she decided that she was going to stick with Naomi. So the question is, our mother-in-laws and our father-in-laws, do we see godliness in them? If no, then we need to pray for their salvation. Number two, what role should our in-laws play? Our fathers and uh, the father-in-law and the mother-in-laws are supposed to be intercessor. People who engage in prayer for young couples. Now we're trying to understand what role should our in-laws play first. Is that they should be an intercessor. Pray for the younger uh, you know, people, younger couples. Pray for wisdom to dwell together in love and in the fear of God. That is what our fathers-in-law should be doing to our homes. Our mother-in-law should be doing to our home. Not the other way around. Number three, from this story, what should we be looking out for as roles of our, of our uh, in-laws? They are to be good examples to the younger couples. Now, examples in character. Let's look at the book of Titus. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. If you have not read today, you can read that for us. Titus chapter 2. Read from verse 1. Titus 2 from verse 1. Okay. That the aged men be sober. That the aged men, that means we are talking about elderly men. People that are elderly, they need to be sober. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Grave. Uh -huh. Temperate. Okay. Sound in faith. Okay. In charity. That means the aged men, our fathers-in-laws and our mother-in-law, they are there to teach the younger brother who say, Oh, I have found your daughter, a beautiful daughter, I want to marry her. The father-in-law should sit in this young man, sit down, sit down, sit down. You need to be grief. You need to be sober. What else did the Bible says there? In patience. You need to be patient. The father's-in-law should teach the son-in-law to be my son. In order to live happily with your wife, you must learn to be patient. But we don't receive all this counsel. And that is why those of us that are yet to be married, that is why God is bringing this to us. We need, you need young brothers. You need to be patient. Go ahead. The aged women, likewise, uh -huh. that they be in behavior as become holiness. That they be in behavior as become holiness. Our aged mothers now, you sit the younger sisters here down. You need to learn to have good behavior in order to have godly marriage. The age woman, that means the ones that are more experienced. You'll be married. Sit them down. You need to be of good behavior in order to enjoy your home. Yes? 
Not false accusers. Not false accuser. Given to not given to much wine. Not given to much wine. That why you shouldn't even be drinking wine in any place. I don't know, um, you know, why somehow that the wine was linked to the woman, but I don't know. But the, even as a child of God, you shouldn't even be drinking wine. Not about not no. Don't even drink. Don't be dead. Don't, don't be drunk. You are a child of God. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, go ahead. Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Our mother-in-laws are supposed to teach. That was exactly what Naomi was teaching Ruth. Look at the strategy that this woman adopted for Ruth. Look at the strategy. Told her, just go and lie down by the edge of his leg. And he says something, she says something else. Let him eat and be drunken and his heart will be merry. Look at that strategy. If Naomi has not offered that, maybe Ruth will just go, co, 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 co. And of course, you know, Boaz is a very wealthy man. She will have just, maybe using her own wisdom, she could have just appeared at the door. And Boaz will have ordered all the bodyguard. And all. Can you get this woman away from here? You want to lure me into sin. Get her away. But look at the wisdom at work in Naomi. Naomi said, my daughter, come. Look good. Go take good care of yourself. Just lay at his feet. Just uncover his feet. And the favor of God. Go ahead. To love their husbands. Yes. Yeah, our mother-in-laws. Our, our sisters that are married. Teach the younger sisters to love their husband. Uh -huh. And to love their children. That they should love their children. Did you see that the Bible did not say love your children before husband? No. Sisters, we must not make that mistake. You must not allow your love for your children to overshadow that of your love for your husband. No, that's not the way God ordained it. God, God brought you and your husband together first. It is out of your union that children proceed from. So love your husband, love your wife. Don't love your children more than the way you love your, 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 your wife, men. Oh, I love my children. Do you love your wife? Because it is both of you that started together, and both of you, when the children have grown up, it is the both of you that will, be re that will remain. So, to love their husband first, and love their children. Go ahead. To be discreet. Uh-huh. Chaste. Uh-huh. Keep us at home. Okay. Good. Okay. Obedient to their own husbands. Okay. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Uh, the mother-in-laws need to teach their daughter-in-law. My daughter, you need to obey your husband. You need to submit to him. When these things are in place, then we'll have a godly marriage. Now, number, number, what number did we stop? What is number one? Okay, number two. Okay, number three. Yes, okay. Now, talking about the, the, you know, being a uh, good character. Number four, what is the roles of the in-laws? I want to mention by the help of the Holy Ghost, our in-laws are not there to settle quarrel. There's no quarrel to settle. Tell your neighbor there's no quarrel to settle. Yes. Please don't have that in the back of your mind. When I'm married, if, she, if, he, if she's not behaving well, if he's not behaving well, I'll just call the father. And the father will put her in order. No. No. Your in-laws are not there to settle quarrel. <laughs> they are not there to settle. How many quarrel do they If they have nine children, that means how many quarrel would they be? <laughs> <It's in nine. laughs> how many? How many? So, don't have that mindset that anytime you are calling your in-law, your in-laws have labored. Let them rest. It is not the time to call them and be narrating, uh, this is what he did. This is what she did. How long will you continue with all of this thing? Number four, their role as in-law is also to show them the way to eternal life. Show them the way to eternal life. 
like so we are combining both the father and the mother we are talking about the rules of the in-laws again remember on the condition that they are godly like we have in the case of naomi naomi was a very godly woman look at true naomi roots and name if you read Gen i mean the book of matthew chapter one when they were reading now the genealogy of jesus christ they mentioned her name their roots who did who did god use God used a godly woman called Naomi, mother-in-law. So through your mother-in-law, God, you see, there are many in depth of wisdom that they have. That they can teach you, you can learn from them. So don't have the mindset that, oh, my mother-in-law, uh, she's a bad person. Now, let's look at what is that now our own role. What is our role to our mother-in-law, our father-in-law, as the case may be? Number one, point them to Jesus. Everybody needs to hear about the love of Christ. Your in-laws are not exempted. Point your in-laws to Jesus. Be, a, a, be, be an example of a good Christian as a daughter-in-law, as a son-in-law. You are going to visit your in-law. And as a brother, your face cap is facing back. Is that a good example or a bad example? I'm not hearing the brothers. Maybe that's what they have been doing. Sir? That's a bad example. It's only the married that could say something. The singles, brothers, they all like to see was them smiling. You, you, are, you are going to visit your father-in-law and you're putting face cap like this. That man will send, if, he, if the man is the one that fears God, he will send you out. He will tell you, no, 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 there's no place for you here. No. Now, so we are to point them to Christ, but in pointing them to Christ, they have to see Christ in our own lives. Your in-laws must be able to vouch for you. No man, no woman wants to give out his son or daughter, you know, and say, oh, uh, my son, go and be married to, to, to this woman. Or you are going to see your mother-in-law, father-in-law as a sister, and you are dressing like a Jezebel. No. You are a child of God. They should see it inside of you. So that when they see your character, when they see your lifestyle, they say, ah, if I, when, when, you, when you are in the, in the sitting room, just like we see in the movies, some of those movies, you are sitting there in the sitting room, you, you know, your mother-in-law and the father-in-law will call them and say, ah, she's a good daughter. She's a child of God. And you see, when mommy say, I like her, I poof. Daddy will say, okay, that's fine. <laughs> you know, if it, mommy will say, ah, my mind is at peace with her. Okay. And the next thing, what happened? Daddy and mommy will come and say, ah, my son, congratulations. Uh, you know, you are going to be our daughter-in-law. Because they've agreed. So, but then if you go there and you dress, the way you even appear does not show that you're a child of God. No, no good in law want that for their son. No good in law want that. No good in law want that. So we are to point them to Christ. Ruth came to know about God through her mother in law. But do you know that the seed of righteousness that was sown in Ruth, she also reciprocated back to her mother in law too. Ruth was willing to lay down her life to see that this woman is well taken care of. And both of them were rewarded. Now, number two. What are we to do? Honor them. Honor your in-laws. Don't despise them. They may not have the Queenish English like we may do. But the truth is that we must give them the honor that is due to them. Honor your in-laws. When we talk about honor, Ruth honored her mother-in-law. Ruth doesn't want her to just go all by herself. Ruth wanted to make sure that she's doing well. To the best of your ability, see what you can do to be of help to them. Honor your in-laws. When you do, they will pray for you from their heart. And it shall continue to be well with your marriage. She treated her like her own biological mother. 
That's the experience of Ruth and Naomi. Ruth treated her mother-in-law like her own biological mother. When you are married, treat your mother-in-laws like your own mother. Don't see her as, a, as an outsider. See her as your own mother. She didn't treat her like a witch who killed her husband and ate up her children. Ruth could have said, well, I can't be joined to this one. After all, we don't even know what happened to your husband anyway. We don't know what happened to your two children. No, Ruth did not do that. Because she was already now a child of God. Ruth could see beyond her. Ruth wanted, she wanted all to be well with Naomi. I pray for all our in-laws, it shall be well with them in the name of Jesus. I said it shall be well with them in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us, say, honor thy father and thy mother, so that it may be well with you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. If you have not read today, you have that opportunity, you can read. We are looking at godly marriage and in-laws. Exodus 20, 12. Yes. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thank you, sir. Now, honor thy father and thy mother. Sisters, when you become married, your father-in-law and mother-in-law becomes your parent. They become your parent. So you honor them. Just like the way we saw in the case of uh, Ruth to Naomi. Ruth did not despise her. Honor them. Now, when we talk about honor, it also requires what kind of honor? Not just greeting them or calling them. You see, one of the honor you can give as a young man or we that are married to our wife, now I'm talking to the men, is that you take good care of your wife. Go and ask any father-in-law. One of the greatest. They don't want to hear today. Uh, uh, Baba, come and, come and warn her again. They want peace. So for as long as they are hearing report of peace from your marriage, is the greatest honor they are looking for. That you take good care of their, of their, of their daughter as a man. Uh, I remember... Um, I can't remember, maybe a couple of months ago, uh, myself, even though we do the, my, from my, my in-laws, the, the, the dad and the mom, I didn't get the chance to meet them, but at least I know the, I know the family. I know the family. Now, uh, one of the, one of our brother, uh, there was a day that uh, he might probably maybe even be joining us, we don't know yet, online. But he sent me a message and he said, ah, uh, thank you for the way you are taking care of my sister and so on. Because perhaps maybe they have not seen a video for a long time. So that day there was a video call. And she said, ah, you know, so it was later. She didn't even know whether she sent, you know, he sent a message. I think it was later I was telling her or she found out on my phone. We that are married, can your in-law send you a message and say, thank you for taking care of of our daughter. Can they see that brothers that you are taking good care of them? Not only not only him, also the one in Nigeria too have told me countless times. And I say countless times, almost every now and then when we talk over the phone. So that is the kind of honor your in-laws are looking for to hear that you are taking good care of their daughter. How about you, um, the sisters? What kind of honor can we give to our in-laws? You see, one of the things that kill people, that makes some people to die early, is lack of peace. Sisters, give your husband peace of mind. Don't stress them. Don't complain over everything. Give them rest. That is the honor you can give to their own parent, to his own parent. That's the kind of honor. 
Wives, give your husband peace of mind. So that when, they, when his own dad and mom sees him, they will say, ah, my son, come, come, come. What has been happening here? Why are you so thin? Why is your face looking like this? What has your wife been doing to you? Of course, every parent will want to know. And then from there, they begin to ask questions, ask questions. So give your husband peace of mind. Give your husband peace of mind so that their own parent, his own parent too, they also want to enjoy their son. They want to enjoy their son. As much as your parent, on the other hand, wants you, wants, you know, wants uh, the desire that your husband take good care of you, vice versa. It must be a balanced thing. So give each other peace, and our home will be glorious in Jesus' name. When you visit your in-laws, it will be prayers of blessing you'll be receiving. I said it will be prayer of blessings you'll be receiving in the name of Jesus. So number three, what are we to do? What is our role to our number one is point them to Christ, very fundamental to honor them. Number three, take good care of them. What is the care we are talking about here? Now let's move from practical things. As a man, this is now to the man in particular. Find out about their welfare. How are they feeding? What token can you send to them to look after them? When was the last time you sent something to them to take care of their basic needs? When was the last time you sent Christmas gifts to them? You see, each time you bless your in-laws, I tell you one thing, they pray for you. And they bless you from their heart. Take good care of them. Now we are talking about taking good care of them spiritually, physically, materially. Now you see, when people are old, when people are getting old, they begin to think differently. Their taste for life begin to change. The things that we were running after now, it no longer is no longer appealing to our aged parents anymore. It's no longer. The things now for them is their grandchildren. For them, they want to hear peace from your home. For them, they want to hear that you are doing well. That is what the old, the old people are looking for. All they are asking for, what they are looking for, is not money. It's not even clothes. Of course, how many? Where are they going? Where are they going? Have you not seen, check around superstores and these things. Have you seen where elderly people are driving to husband, uh, husband and wife? And they are elderly in this uh, wonderful nation? Oh, you must be patient to follow them while driving. And oftentimes when we are driving with them, I'm uh, driving behind them and I see them. I'll, say, I'll tell my wife, I say, well, they don't have where they are going. Yes. They only want to visit Superstore and come back home. Yes, that is all. So for that kind of person, it's not money they're actually looking for. Checking up on them. Visit them once in a while. Give them phone call, you know, call them to see how they are doing. Check on their, you know, if their wife or partner, you know, their wife or husband, as the case may be, you know, how are they doing? And through that, you will see that even they themselves will be happy. Now, also, number four, pray for them. Don't just only take care of their physical need. Don't just only be buying clothes, be buying food. Learn to pray for your in-laws. Pray for them. Pray for them. Before you take a decision, to, or before you, you, are, you, you are going to see them and say, oh, we want to go and see our in-law and present this matter to them, pray about it first. Remember, aged people, they think differently because they are getting, you know, they are getting old. So they see things from a different perspective. So pray about it before you visit them. What should you pray for? Pray that they finish well. What should you pray for? Pray for good health for them. What should you pray for? Pray for longevity for them. 
pray for your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, that it shall be well with them. They will finish well. Now, as you do all of this, you see the Lord blessing you. Now, before we now ask uh, if there are questions or maybe uh, contribution for those that are married. Uh, now, from this story, one of the things that is also that we must not forget, particularly as it relates to Ruth and Naomi, is this. Boaz said something. He said, you have not followed the young man whether rich or poor. If you have the fear of God in you, it will guide your relationship with your in-law. Ruth, I mean, the boy said, you have not followed the rich or young man, whether rich or poor. What is, what is he saying? He's simply telling Ruth, you fear God. I thank God for your life. Our in-laws must be able to say that. They must look at you from distance, sister, and say, ah, this one fears God. She's a child of God. Brothers, your in-laws must be able to look at you and say, hmm, he's a child of God. I'm happy that he's my son-in-law. The fear of God, if we allow the fear of God in our lives, it helps us to overcome a lot of things. Now, maybe a question in your heart will be, which is where we are, uh, you know, wrapping up. And then we'll give room for question. Now, how do we address things that comes from in-laws that are against the word of God? That is the question. Because the truth is that we have different, even the ones that are born again that are Christian. For instance, my son, send me money. You don't know that that money, they want to do an annual uh, idol something in their village. They may not tell you the details. And then the Lord open your eyes and you see it. That so the money that your father-in-law is looking for, it is for idol worship. What do we do? So it's open. Yes. The marriage. We are waiting. How do we address such? Because whether we like it or not, there are we, 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 we have had, not only have we had, you've seen some homes that you know there are some things that we can't we can't say openly. So sometimes you see us trying to code them. We have heard one of our you know, an elderly man told us one day. Not only us, I'm sure there are other ministers. He said, that is what happens when you have a mother-in-law that does not love your wife. There was one challenge that family had with their child that led to, you know, a, a terrible loss. That would not be our portion in this house. But an elderly man said to us, this is what happens when you have a mother-in-law that doesn't like the daughter-in-law. That word is very deep. So, now, how do we address questions, challenge, you know, requests from our in-laws that are unbiblical? Yes? Yes? We are waiting. You can go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. The first to remain with um, the let your who you are know from the onset. Yes. If you are a child of God indeed, make it know from the onset. Don't be here and then. And when such requests come, the truth is you can't please man ahead of God. If you think you can please anybody, <laughs> then you don't have cause in your dictionary. 
Because when you please God, you make all things to answer to you. So, respectfully, Ama, sir, I think there's more to this request than what we are, you have been telling us. And don't approach your in-law as a person, like individual. Let them know what is proceeding out of your mouth is coming out from both of you. Praise the Lord. Let me interrupt, Mommy. Maybe my question is uh, very theoretical. Let's be practical. Jacob labored for Rachel. And then, and then the father said, my son is not done in our culture. Our culture is that the elder sister must be married for. So, from my understanding, Jacob did not set out to have married two wives. But he got two wives because the father-in-law offered it. Practical example, one. Two, we also see the case of Ferez, Judas. So Judas, Judas had two sons. Now, similar to what happened to Elimelech, those two, one, you know, one was wicked. The Lord killed them. The Bible said God killed that boy, killed the son, killed that boy. And then the second one, by the you know Jewish culture, you were supposed to okay be married to your brother's wife, had children, but you know he spied on the floor. And the Bible tells us God also did what killed him as well. Yes. Now where are we going? Then. The Judas had another destiny. He said, okay, when this one has grown up, don't worry, my daughter-in-law, I will reserve this boy for you. You are going to be married. But Judah did not keep to his word. But there was, again, a lot of things that happened along the way. So just practical examples like that. How do we address it? Because this is what many homes are facing. Yes, you can go ahead now. The Lord. The first thing remains this, that you have to make. Jacob make a mistake. The moment you get to the home of Laban, one target is to have is to get him to God of Israel. Because it wasn't hidden that this man wasn't serving the same God as he. He knows right from the onset, just like you just mentioned. We should make sure that we point them to Jesus. Point them to Jesus. In fact, it's okay for them not to accept you because you are pointing them to Jesus. Then them accepting you and die in their sin. You have many missions in that marriage than just marry to their son or to their daughter. There are more to that. There are some souls that have been attached to all. I remember my mother-in-law when she was alive. Secretly, it's a burden in my heart that I always pray, God, she, she taught me everything that you can see that I'm portraying today because I don't have a mom that could teach me when I was, I wasn't, she wasn't there. She was not alive. And I've been praying, God, give me a mother-in-law that have your fear, that have what it takes to be a mother. She has it, but she's missing one thing. She wasn't a born-again Christian. She's a Christian going to church, but she wasn't a core Christian, cut out for Jesus, which means my mother-in-law can move here today in as long as we save our children. All that concern is our children. But when I cited that in her, it became a burden in me. And I was praying for fasting secretly god please save this woman not knowing that even my husband has been talking to her about salvation but there was a time the holy spirit points me say anytime you're on break and she's in lagos i will make a way for you go to lagos so i will go to her and stay with my aunt my aunt stay in uh, there's a far distance i can't remember the all this name in uh, in lagos i have to leave my auntie's house i say i came for all the days i will go to my my mother-in-law's place i will be teaching her bible she doesn't understand english i don't understand how to read in yoruba i will read the scripture but we interpret it in the little yoruba that i understand how to explain and i will hide her hand we will pray together one day she said something she said ah, david will be talking to me i will speak it in yoruba uh, Oh, and David demand me so wrong for a long. You want not to walk or a long, sha, 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 sha. And I told her something. I said, because that is the best gift we can give to. The interpretation is this. He said, the son always talked to her about Jesus. That means she's expecting that anytime I come to visit her, we will do normality. It's always about Jesus too. 
And that's why that's the best gift we can give to you. What am I saying? My mother-in-law has said Jesus. Even when I was not there, the son led her to Christ. But I could see a transformation. Because we could hold our hands sometimes like this, we would pray. Even when she's not there physically, we will call. When I call her, we will pray. She will, say, she will be saying, I should be saying amen. She will be praying in their language. I will be saying amen. What are we saying? Give them Christ. Jacob did not give them Christ. He, came, he went there for a rescue, to be, to be rescued by himself. And you find a woman, he's just laboring for that woman, forgotten a soul. And he can't, we can see what hand. He should have stand in love. It wasn't, it wasn't his fault. He <laughs> fell in love. He's supposed to stand in love. He, he, he <laughs> fell in love. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, come. <laughs> and we see what happened. Even oh, you, oh, you fair. Uh, <laughs> the father-in-law actually helped him. But he helped him blindly. Richard wasn't the plan of God for Jacob. But we thank God. God still comes to his rescue. But honestly... Singles, the best gift you can give to your family, they are your family, is this, Christ. Christ. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause for that amazing contribution. Uh, one point we are, we are seeing from what mommy said is this. Um, you see the foundation of everything. The first time you meet your in-law, the first time you're visiting them, if they don't know who you really are as a child of God, 10 years down the road, you can't come back and be show something else. They won't even listen. But let them see true child of God inside of you, both where you are there and out where you are not there. They should be able to vow. Then, in fact, they'll be careful to, to bring, there are some things they can't even bring close to you when they know. So that's one key lesson. Again, we must point our in-laws to Christ. Yes? Do we have uh, other contribution from the marriage? Brother Yeleye, anything from? All right, sir. Do we have questions? We can't see it. Yes, we can't see it. So, there is one currently. How can, young, how can a young couple deal with brothers and sisters in law? that are demanding. For example, they always come around to collect money or visit. Hmm. Okay. Let's hear, okay, yes, now let's hear from Brother Oyele. Okay. Hallelujah. Please, let's get a microphone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I think in most cases, this happened because our, li our wives, they love us. So, they will go and tell their uh, siblings, oh, my husband is doing well, for instance. So, but the implication of that is that sometimes they will come around and say, okay, uh, give us 50K or something like that. It's the same wife that you run back and, you know, say, let me go and tell them that, that this um, demand, I cannot meet it at this time. So it's not good most times as a man to confront your in-laws and say, I can't, I can't meet that demand. No, you have to play. You know, the, the man of God said something about family, culture, tradition. You don't want to be, you know, you just want to go to your wife. <laughs> See that. Look, let me tell you, talk to your brother. This, this transaction, it cannot go this month. Let us do, do <coughs> find a way of uh, doing it sometimes later. So that way you, you manage it with wisdom. And that's the way to go about it. Amen. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause. Thank you, sir. Yes, very, very important. Again, you see, uh, agreement, unity between husband and wife is very important. If, like uh, Brother Yeleya said, if there are demands coming from your in-laws, like your, bro your brothers-in-law, your sisters-in-law, which obviously I can tell you there will be. Depends on the kind of family, maybe large or it depends. But the truth is this. When those demands come, you are still in the, your wife or your husband, as the case may be at that time, you have to agree. And not only agree, let it also come from, you know, from your wife like if it is in the case of your wife now. 
it's not you that will just, for instance, you can't just say, bye, uh, Baba, no, we can't do that. Oh. No, uh, the man might be offended. We don't want to get elderly people offended. No. You can say, oh, my dear, we need to visit Baba. Go, you, you be the one to talk. Uh, see him as father to daughter, one-on-one. -on -one. And then another thing is this. Uh, yes, particularly to our sisters. It is okay to talk about how much God is blessing our husbands and home. But be careful of what you say. The reason is this. Everything that we you know you are an insider. An insider has more information than an outsider. So when you are speaking with your in-laws, whether brother-in-law, sister-in-law, uh, daddy or whatever, and you are just talking about your husband paycheck, you are talking about uh, you know the new house, you are talking about the investment, you are talking, nothing may come immediately at that time. But it may be six months later. Uh -huh, my daughter, let me tell your husband, I need him to build me a house, a bungalow in the village. Ah. Is it at that time that you want to be, Baba, ah, things are wonderful. Here in Canada is mortgage. Baba don't know what is mortgage. <laughs> she doesn't understand mortgage. Baba always think that, you know, the way they own house in Africa. You build a house, you, you know, but well here, you know, you it's mortgage, right? Now, so, now how do you then want to correct the things you have said? Baba already have a picture. My son-in-law, Owuwan, is very rich. Very, very wealthy. And so he could, should be able to build me a bungalow. And now, and maybe at that time, things were very glorious. So it becomes a challenge. That could lead to a problem. So let us be careful of the information that you disclose out. Also, for our brothers, the information you disclose out about your wife too, to your family, is also very important. Don't paint your wife in a negative picture before your, your family. No. Don't paint your husband in a negative picture before your family. No. Speak good of her, even when she's not there. Speak good of him when he's not there. With that, you see, it helps even to strengthen the bond of your marriage. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just to build on what Pastor has said. Many of us will take we do commit this error ignorantly. For instance, you are engaged to someone and you want to give your family an impression of who the person is. Oh, you work in the bank. They didn't ask you. It wa in fact, it's the general CEO or whatsoever. What you are doing is advertisement. And any advertisement you do is to sell a product. There's a time where people will want to buy that product. You can't tell them you are no longer selling. That is just it. Learn to speak, ask, answer a question when it comes. Not throwing answer out when there is no question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And again, be open. This person is talking about brothers and sister-in-law. Honestly, don't do anything behind your husband as a woman. There was a time I got a call from my elder brother. The tune was scary, and there's this urgency in it. <laughs> I told him, he later told me, he said, wow, you are indeed sold out to God. And when I take that decision, I told him, I said, ah, brother, calm down. There is nothing I can do now. I have to contact my husband. Let's see what we can do. It's no longer about me. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about somebody that laid down his life. He didn't marry until close to 40 because he wants to make sure that I graduate school. It's labor for every one of us to be where we are. But the truth is this. I build my own on trust. And I want to maintain that trust. And I texted my husband. He didn't respond on time because he wasn't, he wasn't responding to God or anything. My brother keep calling. I can't even count how many times. I texted him, sir, wait, I will get back to you. And when my husband get back to me, I hand the matter over to my husband. I wasn't the one that get back to my brother. My husband was the one that get back to him. 
Even though I know how everything was going and the problem was solved. What am I saying? Let your people, both in-law, brother, sister, father, mother, let them know what you folks have cut out for. Because if you don't let them know early, the enemy may use that, the fact that you want to be nice to your family, you want to be nice to this as a channel. They will ask you and call your husband and ask. And you people have one pot. And if you take, you come and take. The pot is reduced for one source. So wisdom demands openness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Um, now, that story about uh, Judah and Tamar can be found in Genesis 38. You can read that on your own again. It's also talking about in-laws, you know, how you handle, you know, requests. There are lessons from there. Do we have any other question? If a brother prayed and received a sister, but the father of the lady says no, what can the brother do? The brother should go and pray again. Yes. The brother should pray until the father says yes. Yes. The brother should pray until the father says yes. Sir? Until the father says yes. Or oh, one of our songs. Oh, uh, sister, you wanted to say something? All right. Hallelujah. My fellowship is from play two states back home in abroad. And the sister is a Yoruba sister. And when both of them prayed, the Lord told him that would be his sister. And when the sister and the brother went home to tell the father, the father said no. That no, you cannot. Ma the brother is a Christian. We know we have a lot of Christians from play two states. And the father, it took them five years. Because they were convinced that that is the will of God. But they stood their ground and they kept praying. So at times, you may go in January and Baba will say no. You go back in December and say, and some people will like, let me move forward. I can't wait anymore. Then you can lose the will of God. Mm. So at times, there are obstacles that come along the way. But if you are really a child of God, Bible says those that know they are God, they shall be stronger and they shall rest. As in you will stand your ground and you're like, God, you yourself will reveal it to this Baba and you will be the one to call. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause. Yes, Brother Kelly. Or they say no the most important thing is you want to get their blessing and their support it is very important you really want to get your father and mother-in-laws bless you and support you they may not give you money but that spiritual support from them especially if they are christians it helps to build your home as well and gives you god's peace and remember god's word says if you honor them if they bless you it will stand for you for generations and generations let's Praise give jesus a big round of applause as well Yes, you can go ahead. It's the Lord. Hallelujah. They are saying no today may be a way of God helping you to have a solid background. Mm. Oftentimes we look at situation that God will use to build our Christian faith as something that has to do with demon and witches and wizards. No. When they say no today, it's a way of God testing your faith. Many of us, we say we are convinced, but a little challenge, in fact, you already tried pressing different buttons. If you are convinced, the Bible said the heart of a king is in his hand. Like mass of running water, I turn it to whatever you want. Tell me who father doesn't want their child to get married, apart from the one that is the mob, the possessed. Mm -hmm. But the joy of every father is this. In fact, they are helping you calculate it if you don't know. They know when you finish school. They know the job you are doing. They know the status you have. The next secret prayer they are having is just settle this child. But when they say no, is a will of God helping you to have a solid background. That is the time you stand with God. That is the time you build your spiritual muscle in the place of prayer. Holding on. Faith is when you believe what you have not seen. It's not when you have seen that thing. And you say, yeah, it is mine. If all of them just say yes, yes to you, tomorrow you can just look at the guy and say, ah, ah, I get you, are not stressed. Oh, the man, I just, I just pray and God just click it. 
In our own case, it was my uh, immediate senior, uh, our second born. He was like, what work does he do? He wasn't a, an education student. I say, I say, so the teacher want to marry teacher. <laughs> and I look at him. <laughs> and because then, see, I see. <laughs> like, <laughs> like then, I, then I, I'm this kind of, I don't <laughs> verbalize my they say let's 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 see what will come out of two of them. I don't verbalize <laughs> my feelings. I I reserve my feelings. Mm. Then after I pray and I'm led, I can face you. Then we went to visit him in Lagos, and he's a pharmacist by profession. And the way I was questioning my husband to be honestly, I was right sitting down there. I just excused myself. I went to the bank by, to the uh, corridor, and I was talking to his wife. I allowed them to be men talk. But while I was outside, I was praying. It was like th God has already told me that you will sit both of you, like you will stand, and I'm checking you in particular. So I was like, okay. But thank God for him. He wasn't seeing me that way, and I never discussed it with him that this is what my brother is trying to talk you out or talk us out. He is looking at financial stability. But now, <laughs> to the glory of God, you can see. Come and see. Even him. He was the one that he was saying that I texted him. And some Don't of Don't let us discuss <laughs> family matters. <laughs> some, <of, laughs> some of our brethren knows it. Like Don't, the us know my elder brother that I'm talking Don't, about. Don't let us it's discuss ma family matter person. outside. And God used us also to, uh, you to know, rescue him uh, from destruction. Uh, uh, like uh, show him the light of salvation. Uh, uh, thank you, Zeno. So thank please. You. <laughs> thank you, Zeno. <laughs> Don't let us discuss family matters. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. You know, you know, and honestly, like my wife said, uh, yes, I'll come to you, sir. You see, honestly, like my wife said, I didn't even see any of those things when we visited him in Lagos. You know, we were just normal brother talk. You see, um, there was a time recently we were trying to address one or two things, again, extended family, and he was in the meeting. Uh, one thing I appreciate about that, my brother-in-law, is that he thinks like a lawyer. <laughs> and you see, that's why I say, you know, if you study people, I do tell my wife, even when we say, see, uh, the way uh, brother so-and-so is looking at this matter, don't think that he's, he's, you know, it's just his own perspective. And his own point, he could help us also in this matter. So I've only seen him right from beginning because I, the brother I grew up with too has the same nature with him. So I, so there was no, there was no bias in my mind. There was no even. If I remember that day when we left, you know, he was. If I he gave me certain amount of money, you know, you know he's yes, <laughs> he gave me certain amount. So and today we are, we you know, we are best of friends. We we talk, you know, sometime. You know, and because he also enjoys, you know, he's somebody that when he when he has something to him in his mind to talk, sometimes we can be on the phone for forty five minutes. You know, the same person we are talking about today. So we are best of all friends. And it has been from the beginning. So if 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 your father in law or a, a family member is saying no, uh, don't be discouraged. Please, that is the time to go back and pray. That is the time to go back and pray. And you see, God is simply working out patient, even in you as well. God is perfecting, fine-tuning some things in your own life. Praise the Lord. Yes, go ahead, uh, Brother Elaine. Amen. Hello. Uh, share a life experience we had in our previous parish in Nigeria. The exact same word that the man of God used that. <coughs> God is using that situation to build patience in you. It's time to pray. And where it can come from the in-law, it can also come from other quarters, right? Praise the Lord. This particular one is uh, eligible sister. She's ready. She's of age, but the man, uh, she was the one like trying to expedite the, you know. Then the man of God, for some strange reason, Pastor Nebamo, he can be hearing this. The man of God just said, "No, go and wait. Go and pray." I've never seen anything like that in my life. But you know the way the Nigerian Christians that you can go do and return to our pastor to go and pray, go and go to the provincial pastor. 
So the sister is very present in the choir. When she goes to the choir, and that's why they just use the name. Brethren, not six months into the marriage, the man slept within a week. Is it up to six months? More than seven months. What is this? I've never seen anything like that. Since that day, I begin to fear, of course, I have the fear of God for all. For, for, but I have a fresh understanding that when men of God are standing, you know, especially people who are prayerful, who are, you know, the, even the man of God cannot tell what was it, what, was it in him. Wow. He didn't even know in him why he was telling the, her to wait, wait, hold, 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 hold. It was a big, big issue in our parish that time that if only this is to listen. After 10 years now, she's still sing as I'm speaking. So, is, is a, is a, I, I always, I love this church a great deal because, you know, when you see young people who have opportunity to know Jesus, it will have, it will, you know, you will avoid needless headache, needless headache, needless problem. And God will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Man of God, please, one more second. I just want to sh also share an experience in law. You see, there are sometimes some things that our modern in laws know that, trust me, d uh, my sisters, please just let them. Let them. Just give them that benefit of doubt. According to what uh, the, the scripture that was told to us, Ruth knew the way to go about it. And thank God that, uh, uh, sorry, Naomi knew the way to go about it. That's thank God that knew followed. When the mother in law comes and the daughter in law is even saying, don't touch my newborn baby. Why? Why? You are the one that should give the baby to the mother-in-law. See, there's a, not, not, you know, culturally, these old women, they carry more than, they some of them carry more than 150 years of experience. They are home 70 years, plus they are home mother 70 years. <laughs> yes, they are carrying one, more than 150 years of experience. And they can carry a baby like this and, and know that this baby needs to be, to, to be taken. This baby has done this. And the doctor that is trained in the medical school doesn't even know the baby has done, done this. <laughs> so, you need, you need to, let's, let's just be open-minded. I know that it's difficult for daughter-in-law to, you know, use your baby. But give it to mama. Let mama carry the baby. That's how they force-fed the boy. He didn't die. So don't, don't, don't worry too much. Since they are Christians, and God will bless us. When we had our first child, my mother came, just catch the boy, and said, ah, this boy has started to Even the doctor, don't, they don't know. It was my mom that said, oh, it's because being, when you were small, you had talipi. So I knew that, you know, this, this baby will, that they will say, ah, when the baby is grown, it will be tall. So in the womb, it's kind of, the legs kind of come like this, you know? But uh, you get the message, though. Let them. God will bless us in Jesus' name. Let's give Jesus a big round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful. You see, and that's why we are having this kind of fellowship. I remember there was a time Sister Francine shared her own, too. And, uh, you know. Now, with all of this that we have had, Mother-in-laws are not witch. Yes, please, they are not witch. And don't make them one. Because if you are trying to make them one, that means you yourself, you want to become, uh, you, you only give what you have, right? Uh -huh. So please, we are to be, if, you, if, you, if they see Christ in you, I'm telling you, you will enjoy your marriage. Christ is free. Christ is free. There's no concern, zero concern. You know, see them as children of God. See them as your own biological parent. A lot of people have different experiences with their, you know, father-in-law, their mother-in-law. But your own experiences will be good. I say your own experiences will be a good one. Our sisters, our singles, you know, I was glad when our brother said this as well. You know, sometimes, you know, you know some, some pick of friends, some, there's different things. There's different, that's why sometimes I tell my wife, I want to know about I'm telling you, what is the meaning? 
the people that God did not call to this work, and they are calling themselves. I do tell them, I don't know how they are. I'm serious. I'm serious. If God did not call you in this one, you are doing it. Ah. So when you tell people to wait, sometimes they just think, no, pastor has just been too critical. No, it's for good. Sometimes, you know, you can't even explain what is going on in your mind, but you know that the pastor wanted good for you. He wanted the best for you. And you will also see it in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm sure we've done justice to all the questions. I know usually we do have questions here and there. We thank, yes. Okay, go ahead. Ruth chapter 4, verse 15. He said, and he said, that's Boaz now talking. Hmm. He's talking when he ended, just like what our, our brother said, when that we should release these children. Don't think that your mother-in-law, your father-in-law oh, is bed. coming what? for anything hmm. other than to help. Okay? He said, and he said, and it shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, hmm. and a nurturer of thy old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than and seven sons hmm. are born in. Hmm. Every blessing, this is it, is the way of God expanding us. Marriage is a way of God expanding us and blessing us. Like now, I come from a family of four. I would say we are three anyway. So I have an adopted sister, we need four. But God added nine people more to me. It's a blessing. See your in-laws as an additional blessing. Because each one of them has treasure in them that will add value to your own destiny and the destiny of your children. Obed was the one here that brings restaurant and also is a forerunner, a, a, a foundation for Jesus' background. You can mm. see what happened. So there are more to achieve from our in-law than what we think we can give them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shall we be on our feet? We are going to now, we are going to pray. We have learned about godly marriage and in-laws. Very, very important uh, issues the Lord has brought unto us. Uh, we are going to lift up our voices. Now let's begin to appreciate God. Maybe you are here this afternoon. You are joining us in person or online. And you are not married. Or you are married. And bo but you, are not, you have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. I want you to know that Jesus is the one that built homes. It doesn't matter whether you were born in a Christian home, you bear a Christian name, you were baptized by a bishop or whatever thing, you know, religious, those religious things while you were growing up, those things does not culminate into salvation. You need to have a personal one-on-one -on -one experience with Jesus. Or maybe you are one of the children or anywhere you may be in the world and you are not born again. I want you to raise up your right hand and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today a sinner. Please forgive me my sin. Please write my name in the book of life. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Give me a brand new beginning in Jesus' name. I ask for wisdom. Wisdom even to, have to raise godly family. Wisdom even to relate with my in-law in Jesus' name. Lord, as many that have prayed this prayer, I pray, Lord, forgive them their sins. Write their name in the book of life. I pray that, Father, from today, give them a brand new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them a brand new beginning in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying. Our next prayer point, if you have your husband or wife here, those of you that are married, that are together, you hold each other. If you are not married yet, that is fine. You are going to be praying for yourself and praying for your future partner. Now, we are going to pray. You are going to say, Father. You are going to pray and say, Father, you are the author of marriage. Fill me with wisdom to build my home. Go ahead and make that your prayer. Everybody needs to pray that prayer. Whether you are single, whether you are married, everyone needs to pray that prayer. 
lift up your voice wherever you may be right now father in the name of jesus give me wisdom to build my home in the name of jesus wisdom comes from god sound wisdom comes from god jesus is the is the author is the author and finisher of our faith is the one that is the embodiment of all the wisdom that is in god cry to him this afternoon and say father fill me and my wife with wisdom wisdom to raise a godly home in the mighty name of jesus singles you need to pray that prayer for your own self pray that prayer even as as god will also be ordering your staff maritally in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we are praying your next prayer upon you are going to say father let it be well with my father-in-law let it be well with my mother-in-law let it be well with my in-laws go ahead and pray for them in the name of jesus pray for them pray for them pray for them singles you can invest prayer ahead even though if you don't know who you know who the brother is yes you don't know who the sister is yeah you can invest prayer ahead you can invest prayer ahead. prayer don't die prayer is a seed prayer is a seed in the name of jesus let it be well with my in-laws in the mighty name of jesus let it be well with them wherever they may be right now lord jesus cause your face to shine upon them in the mighty name of jesus let it be well with them let it be well with them let it be well with them in the mighty name of jesus let it be well with all my in-law in jesus mighty name we are praying now our next prayer point is for the singles those of us that are married please i want you to pray for them you see um you know only god knows you know who knows, knows our heart for the singles for the youth for the children is that we are we want to see you do well and that's a passion that god has placed in our heart and that's why sometimes it can look as if we are over jealous over your life that's why it can look as if we are we are interested in everything it's because of the of the love that christ has placed you are going to pray please help me pray for this single you are going to pray and say father please guide all our singles in the choice of who to be to, to marry in decision making please guide them let's pray that the holy spirit will open their eyes please pray some of them i was just speaking with one yesterday i said people in your age that's what i was telling her she might even be joining us online now i said people of your age sometimes you think you know what you are doing but you don't know what you are doing but you need somebody that can tell you what you are doing that what you need to do let's pray for them sometimes some of them they think they know what they are doing but they don't even know what they are doing let's cry to god those of us that are married please would you please pray from your heart for them pray this one no one in this hour will miss it you will all be gloriously married the lord will order your step we will be alive to celebrate jesus in your life celebrate your weddings in the name of jesus you will not miss it god did not allow us to miss it you will not miss it you'll be gloriously married you will not make me stay we come against error we come against any form of pressure if anybody pressuring you maybe your friends are getting engaged and then the enemy is telling you see all your friends are engaged now all your friends are getting married how about you and now you feel under pressure i command that evil pressure to go in the name of jesus you will be gloriously married as a church will pray for you this afternoon in the name of jesus you will not miss it maritally for all our single brothers for all our single sisters in the name of jesus the lord we order your staff in the name of jesus you will not miss it in the name of jesus you will enjoy your home you will enjoy your marriage in jesus mighty name we are free you see there are many things that there are many things that god opens our eyes to see some we can't tell you no we are going to pray for our singles we are going to pray for them you see there was a particular one whereby it was in a dream and that day i remember working on sharing with my wife i said this is what the lord revealed to me concerning this the person she's taken as her friend the person was the one that's about to even terminate her life in that dream and i woke up and i shared with my wife and we prayed i said lord we can't call this sister and tell her 
But Lord, we agree. Please, spare the life of this sister. Wherever she may be right now, let your mercy prevail. And we thank God, God had. We are going to pray. You are going to say, Father, separate all our singles from evil companies, from bad advisors. Please go ahead and pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pour out your heart and pray for them. If you are married in the house or joining us online, help me pray for our singles. They need our prayer. Father, please separate them from bad advisors. Many of them, they have too many advisors. That's a major problem. Brother A is advising them. Sister A is advising them. May they have one pastor online. They have one this and that and this and that. And that's why many of them are confused. Father, separate our singles from bad advisor. Anyone feeding them with wrong information, Lord Jesus, expose them and lose all your children from the grips of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, separate our singles from bad advisor. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Your second to the last prayer point, you are going to pray for all marriages in Jesus. Son. The arrow of divorce will not enter any home. We'll pray for all the men, the women, their love for God and their love for one another will work stronger and stronger. No marriage in this hour will break down. Go ahead and begin to pray for the marriage. Singles, now it is your turn. In the name of Jesus, Father, we lift up all the marriages in Jesus' house. You are the one that have brought all these marriages together. Lord Jesus, Lord, keep every home from the arrows of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, we'll pray for all the marriages the hand of the enemy will not touch you the hand of the enemy will not reach your home we come against the arrow of the wall we come against the arrow of the wicked our children will not be a victim none of our men will not die our women will not die long life our portion and you will be alive to see your great great grandchildren in the name of Jesus, MP in Azo Zenaba, Eleko de Besiataya, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And finally, you are going to pray and say, Father, as many homes in this community, in the body of Christ, that are struggling spiritually, financially, materially arise and send help to them please lift up your voice and pray let's pray in one accord in the name of jesus as many marriages that are struggling as many homes that are struggling father send help out to them your word said you are a very present help in trouble as many homes that are struggling right now financially father arise and rescue them as many homes that are struggling spiritually lord arise and rescue them as many homes that are struggling even health why please father arise and rescue them marriages in this community restore joy to them heal their home heal their family heal their marriages draw them lord into your kingdom establish them in jesus house we pray for the body of christ we pray for all our pastors we pray for all the men of god their home will not collapse as you are laboring to see other people home build your own home will not collapse my own home will not collapse the home of our father and the lord pastor tg okono his home will not collapse the home of pastor here will not collapse in the name of jesus we pray for all the men of god in the name of jesus it shall be well with your marriage it shall be well with your children it shall be well with all your grandchildren it shall be well with the church of god in jesus mighty name we are praying ancient of days we are grateful we thank you for answers to all our prayer thank you for this glorious fellowship thank you for all you have been doing over the years thank you for your word you have brought unto us godly marriage and in-laws thank you for giving us good examples to follow even from your word and thank you for homes that you are raising in this house lord i pray let this word mix with faith in our heart both for we that are married, let it mix with faith in our heart. Lord Jesus, let it mix with faith in the heart of all our singles. Lord, I pray for all the marriages in Jesus' house. Your marriage will flourish. 
your marriages will prosper. In the name of Jesus, I come against divorce. In the name of Jesus, I come against sickness. In the name of Jesus, I come against sorrow. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, those of you that are, that, that, that are here in person or joining us online, I pray for you, you will not lose your smile. I pray for you, you will not lose your smile. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, parents, you will not lose your children. In the name of Jesus, I pray for all the singles, the Lord will guide you. Maritally, the Lord will say to you, the Lord, that they, as your heart stays on God, he said, be still and know that I am God. The book of Psalm 40, 46, in that verse 10. I pray for you, you singles, your heart will be still on God. You will not be anxious. The Lord will guide you. His spirit will lead you. I severe your destiny from bad advisors. In the name of Jesus. Anyone that may be polluting your life and the secret in the name of Jesus, the Lord expose them. I pray for you, you will enjoy your marriage. You will be gloriously married. I pray anything working against your marital settlement this afternoon will break that yoke. We destroy that counsel in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. You will not miss God's will for your life. You will not miss God's will for your life. For we that are married, all our children, they will be gloriously married. When the time comes in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for this uh, for marriages in this coming. Let it be well with all the marriages. Let there be peace. Let there be joy in their home. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for all our family, all our in-laws. Let it be well with them. Tomorrow's services is before you take control, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are free. Shout a big amen. Let's quickly give our offering. Cast your offering unto the Lord. Let's give our offering unto the Lord. And as you do, the Bible tells us that when we appear before the Lord, we should not appear empty-handed. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16 and verse 17. As you give unto the Lord, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Yes, go ahead, choir. What shall we do today? Today, oh. Today, oh, today, oh, I will lift up my voice in praise, for I know, for I know, you are always there for me, almighty God, almighty God, you are my Every day of my life, I will praise the Lord. You will own not worthy, Lord, to be praised and adored. You will own not worthy, Lord, to be praised and adored. You've been faithful, Lord. You've been faithful. From the ages past, that is why your name is forevermore. You've been faithful, Lord. You've been faithful, Lord. From the ages past, that is why your name is forevermore. You have been faithful, Lord. You've been faithful, Lord. From the ages past. That is why your name. That is why your name is forevermore. You have been faithful, Lord. You've been faithful, Lord. From the ages past. That is why your name. Is forevermore. Ancient of days, this is our testimony. 
that you have been faithful. We thank you even for the privilege to bring an offering before you. Please, Father, accept us and our offering. We use this offering as a point of contact to the marital settlement of all your children. Lord Jesus, let every home be established. Let your blessing be upon every home. Let it be upon every family in this house in the name of Jesus. I thank you for abundance. I thank you for open doors. To you alone be all the glory. I pray for your family and end has come to scarcity. You begin to enjoy abundance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' mighty name, we are friends. Amen. Shall we share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I wanted to find three people and tell them God ordained godly marriage for you. God ordained godly marriage for you. God ordained godly marriage for you. You will all enjoy your marriage in the name of Jesus. Give it to your neighbor. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Brother, uh, God bless you, the rest of you. That is all. Brother Titus and Brother Shea, you give it to your neighbor. <laughs>